I used to think that Pablo Picasso was just a bad artist. Turns out I was wrong. Picasso was an exceptionally talented artist. As a kid, he painted this at age eight. As a teenager, he painted a number of works such as The Old Fisherman, First Communion, and portraits of both himself and his mother. But despite talent, these works weren't particularly unique. The style doesn't really stand out. But then Picasso started studying different styles of art from around the world and basically mashed them together to create a new style that made him famous. Picasso's innovation came by him recombining his own technical skill in traditional art with unique styles to create something entirely new. Invention involves a process of recombining other things into something new, and it goes well beyond Picasso and painting. Apple recombined a music player, cell phone, digital camera, GPS, and other devices into one masterpiece, known as the iPhone. Creating something new, or invention, is the first step in innovation. You can measure the success of inventions using technical criteria, such as a faster car or a more powerful camera lens. But to truly innovate, you have to go beyond the invention stage. Innovation requires taking an invention and sharing it with others. The new invention is only useful when others can benefit from it, and this requires that it go to market or otherwise be distributed to other people. Artworks may be sold through galleries, and iPhones are sold by the millions. The success of this step of innovation is measured by sales and profit. In this way, innovation can create competitive advantages for companies. The next step in the process of innovation is imitation. And this happens when other companies start to copy and create knockoffs of the original invention. Other artists followed Picasso's styles. Samsung, LG, Motorola, and others created iPhone knockoffs. Some companies such as Motorola and Xiaomi compete as cost leaders. They've standardized or simplified the smartphone to create a lower cost version of what originally was created by Apple. Imitation can significantly cut into the market share of the original inventor. The process of innovation can be used by nonprofits just as well as it can by for-profit companies. Operation Underground Railroad was started by a former CIA officer who wanted to help people beyond the jurisdiction of the U.S. government. He leveraged his own experience, recruited former Navy SEALs and military special ops. He recruited celebrities to help with fundraising and essentially runs a successful business where the investors are donors and the beneficiaries are the people they rescue. It's innovative entrepreneurship without a profit motive. If you're not familiar with Operation Underground Railroad, I encourage you to check them out using the link in the description. Entrepreneurs innovate by taking inventions to the masses. Without this step of innovation, inventions would not matter. But with innovation, companies can build stronger companies for themselves, create benefits for their customers, and reward their investors. I want you to identify an unsolved problem in your industry and then describe how recombination of other solutions could create a solution to that problem. What solutions could be mixed together to fix that problem and how could you make that new solution a reality? Figure that out and you can be both an innovator and an entrepreneur. I hope you found this video to be inspiring in your own entrepreneurial endeavors or at least interesting. And if you follow through on the idea that you identified, I'd love to hear about it. Have a wonderful day. Take care.